Hello everybody, how's it going? You can hear the river down there. It's running pretty hard. There it is. This is the deck. Let me get you back here. And that, my friends, is the Trinity River. Now up here, we are covered in clouds, but that was all covered in snow just a little bit ago, which I'm sure it still is. It's about 50 degrees out now, um, but it was snowing a little bit earlier, and uh, I'm sure it'll start snowing again soon. It's um, supposed to be snowy for the next few days, which is a bummer, bummer, bummer. Um, Let's see, I could give you a little bit of a walk around the place. Um, we have blackberry bushes that need to be thinned out, but I am looking forward to making some wonderful blackberry jam or pies. There's my little place right there. Needs some work and we will be doing a paint job on that fairly soon. Um, this is, I'm not sure what type of bush this is, but look at how gorgeous the color is. So, it's pretty cool. Um, I don't want to show you too much of the main cabin since that is not uh, technically my place. But we have uh, a picnic table up here, which I am sure I will be doing some um, work off of that place. I'll bring you over here just a second. This is the road down to the river. And we've got a nice little uh, stream going here. I don't know if I really want to go too far. Uh, it's pretty steep. And um, oh, the river's really running. Yeah, it's a little bit muddy, but I have good shoes on. The mud, I suppose. Look at the amazing tree. Look how gorgeous that is right now. Wow. And then this is pretty cool. I mean, look, I'm not even sure what type of tree that is. I'm going to have to figure that out. Um, but the um, woman who built this property was originally, or was an artist. And look at this little cool little piece of art. It sits off the backyard. Uh, we're, we're standing behind the main cabin right now and uh, there's the cliff face and then you have a row of trees up there but then there is a full mountainside oh, starting to peek through up there. Goes up quite a ways. Not, not massive mountains um, but I'm sure it is actually a pretty good rise uh, considering the elevation. So, yeah, a little waterfall down there. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Um, there it is, everybody. Trinity. Okay, I'm gonna head back up the hill and uh, I'm gonna go get to work. Bye. Have you ever looked closely at a moss wall? Look at how amazing that is. The colors are so beautiful. These little guys. Growing up out of the rocks. These little ferns coming off the sides. Beautiful, huh? It's one of these little funky things. It's a gorgeous rock wall. Hold on here. Don't get sick on me. Another little fern coming out. Just cool stuff. We'll bring you over to this other tree. Now check out this moss that's growing on this guy. It's 
Isn't that the most beautiful green? It's super interesting the way it just is coming out. And lays on top of each other, almost like feathers on a bird. Of course, that is the north facing side. I guess it does have it all the way around the tree. Beautiful texture though, isn't it? There's my beaver. It's a beautiful place. With the leaf shape on these guys, we believe that they are maple leaves, uh, maple trees. So that is right walking up to my deck. So I will have a beautiful canopy of a maple tree right above me. I think. I think that's what it is. The, Leaves look like it. Let's see if we can get one here. They've of course all fallen. Beautiful. Need to get the ivy off of it, of course. You gotta love that view. The mountains up top. I'm living in the big old trees. Just pretend like those boxes aren't there. I still have stuff I have to empty. But that is the view from my window, from my table, my mess of a table. Big, 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 big mess. But yeah, quite the view, isn't it? I'm a lucky girl. Hello, artists. How's it going? Stephanie coming to you from the banks of the Trinity River here in the beautiful Six Rivers National Forest, not far out of Willow Creek, California. It's a big m mouthful of words to say, but um, I don't know, maybe we'll just call it Trinity Studio, but people won't know what that is, right? Um, this was a project that I just finished up on um, You've probably seen the images that I've posted on Patreon. This was my Patreon project. I did an additional project for February. Um, and I put on full instructions, a full product list and links, as well as a video that took about, takes about an hour and a half to get through the video. It is over seven hours of work that I put into this beautiful vignette seraphine. I'm going to call them a seraphine because I don't love the word accordion. And a seraphine, uh, beyond the biblical meaning behind, behind it, um, a seraphine was a musical instrument that was a cross between an organ and an accordion. It had kind of um, a bellow system, I believe. Not, pos not, not positive on how the seraphine worked, but that's what I am going to call these. And I want to make more of these. It was really um, a great project. And on top of it, I made the intuition cards out of them. Um, and and uh, as you, if you do happen to see the Patreon video, I go through the meaning of each word and the image and how it 
connects me to this new place. First piece of art that's completely influenced by being here at the Trinity River. Cool stuff! All right, well, it's been quite a while since we've seen each other. I just gave you a little bit of a preview of um, the new digs here. Um, it's nice to get outside. The rain had let up for a couple minutes. It's been downpouring today. I hope you all are having some afternoon coffee. Let's see what day it is. What day it is? It is uh, the 9th. I think it means it's a Saturday, but I'm not positive. And it's about 2.45 in the afternoon. So today I went to the post office and I had three more cards. Yay. Whoa. <laughs> Stuff falls. It's, it's still, nothing's really organized. Um, luckily I have, luckily I know what was in my drawers because I didn't empty out my drawers to put it into the new drawers. So luckily I have these guys still pretty much so set up the way that they've always been. So I at least know what's in there, but I am missing stuff. But of course, I still have probably seven or eight boxes left to unpack of the studio. I can't find Swoopy. Swoopy is missing. He's hanging out with the jar of gesso. Not gesso. I found the jar of gesso. The jar of Mod Podge. I found all the paintbrushes, so I found the gesso. And luckily, I found the gallon of Mod Podge, so I just refilled another jar. But still, where? Where or where could it be? Um, because Swoopy doesn't fit really easily into one of the smaller boxes. And that's kind of all I have left is smaller boxes. So I'm hoping to find him soon. I miss him. He's such a good friend. Such a good friend. What else do I know today? We got groceries because we're supposed to get snow tonight and for the next few days. And... I finally get to start working on my circus book again. Whew. We left off um, right in the middle of construction on um, this particular big old monster thing. <laughs> oh boy, I hope I can remember what I was envisioning here. I might have to go back and watch my own videos to see, but um, I think I still have a pretty good vision in my brain on how we are going to make this massive monster inside the big top. Um, I had purchased some paper, some acetate. I found it at the Hobby Lobby when everybody was talking about the clearance for the Tim Holtz stuff. I hope that they went and walked into the art uh, supplies because there were some things that I got um, on the art supply clearance that just blew me away. Um, including a ton of um, India ink um, in the fine arts section and these really cool crayons. Um, let me see if I can find those. These guys were in sets. Let's see, they're art crayons, mixed media art crayons. This, they were sets of like six or seven in a package for $15. I picked them up on clearance for $2.50 a package. So of course I got one of every color because well, it's an art supply, and it's something I haven't tried yet, so I want to try it, so um, I'll play with these at some time later on down the road. Not today, but sometime. That's all my, my goodies stuff over there. Um, it, it's getting closer to being unpacked, and I know I'm pretty scattered today, and I'm sorry about that. Oh, you're probably wondering about the dog. Um, sadly, I have decided not to get a dog at this point in time. 
and it breaks my heart um, because it was really something I wanted to do. But there's a really good reason for it. And in about a month and a half, I really need to start doing some research. A month and a half, I'm going to be going to Paris for a week. And then I'll be in Geneva, Switzerland for three days. And then I'm going to Rome for another nine days. So I will be gone for a total of two and a half, almost three weeks. Yeah. How cool is that going to be? But I really do need to do some research because I've just been a little bit busy lately. <laughs> um, the dog, though, I can't justify going and picking up a dog for a month and a half. And I had uh, made an arrangement with Kelly, who is my best friend who purchased this property, um, and she's allowing me to stay here. I'm kind of the caretaker of the property and I do pay rent. Uh, but uh, Kelly was going to take care of my dog for me while I was in Europe. The problem is, and it's not really a problem, but it could be highly confusing for the dog. And I don't think it would be very nice for the animal to come in and be with me for a month and a half and then go and join her pack, which she has three dogs and, and um, a lovely husband and, you know, they have a, a really nice pack, which would be great company for my dog, but I think it'd be highly confusing for them. So um, I don't feel right about it. And as much as it's what I want, I have to do what's right by the animal. So I'm going to wait. Sadly, I will be waiting to get um, my puppy, my dog. Uh, I don't necessarily want a puppy puppy, although I think it'd be kind of fun. But house training is a lot of work. And I do have to do shows this summer. And I know Kelly will help me out with watching the dog. But on the other hand, if I'm doing a show, you know, I, I really have to really logistically look at uh, time schedules and all of those good things. I would love to travel and do shows on the weekends and, you know, kind of see the areas in between. Um, but uh, they don't really allow dogs at the shows unless I can um, train it to be a surface dog, which is possible. Maybe, maybe that will be the solution. I'm not sure. Uh, you know, it's never easy on an animal to be, um, you know, on the pavement when it's 100 degrees out and all of that. So, it's a hard thing to contemplate. And again, I just want to do what's best for the animal. But, let's get down to work. I know I've been blabbing here and you've seen the property and all of those good things. I feel less exhausted today, which is really nice. I've been sleeping pretty well, finally. it I, I have not slept well for months, and um, it's nice to finally be catching up on that. I can really only work here a, a couple hours, and then I must go and try to organize the bedroom a little bit, because it's boxes upon boxes. And um, I think that's all I know for now. Let's get to work. Let's... Uh, Let's see what I can do with, uh, you've, you've all been kind of curious about what I was going to do with the rings. So, uh, let's get those glued down and we'll go from there. And, um, I'm sad about not being able to find the acetate. That's where I started with that whole story from the Hobby Lobby. The acetate, um, I'm wanting to use in the windows, it's a vellum, it's not acetate, it's a vellum. I've tried to use acetate in my laser jet printer. I did it while I was still working, luckily, because the acetate didn't go through. It, it's starting to snow. The acetate did not go through the printer and it kind of melted in there. And I'm worried about using the vellum for the same reason. Now, the reason why I'm going to use the vellum is for the transparency aspect of it. For these windows that I'm creating. I don't know what I'm going to do. But 
as usual, I'll figure it out as I go along. <laughs> right? Right? Okay, so I've got all these windows that I need to put cool things into. I've got a lot of images to choose from. And um, let's get down to the table. Okay, I'm chatting, 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 chatting. Hello artists! Well, I'm finally back at the table. Oh my goodness, it has been so long. I did do a video for Patreon this morning. Well, it finally got uploaded this morning. I worked on the cards for two days and then it did take a day, an overnight for it to upload. So my upload speeds are super slow. However, I have been working on my download speeds and I finally have those much faster on my computer. So maybe I can get those upload speeds a little bit faster or if I, the router is actually in another building. So I might have to go plug into there in order to get the um, speeds to upload faster. But you know, it worked overnight, so. <laughs> <laughs> it only took overnight for your video to upload. The interesting thing about Patreon is that my videos do go onto YouTube, but they go into a private, um, more of a private file. And then that way, um, from that private link, then I share that link onto Patreon. So any of the Patreons can see that. But that was a really cool project that I just did. And it was really nice to just kind of um, be influenced by the environment for one, but to um, just let loose a little bit and just do something completely creative and out of the box. It's inspired by the ATC cards, this one is. Because um, when Kat and I had originally discussed the ATC cards, um, she had mentioned an accordion style and um, so I did a modification of the accordion by the rivets and the jump rings and um, and I'm calling them seraphim cards which I think I already talked to the, talked about those so I apologize if I'm repeating myself again I just can't remember what I'm saying from one minute to the next so as a refresher we are here with this guy, right? <laughs> oh my, oh my. Okay, so what I am currently taping together are the parts that are going to be, I know you guys are wondering what the rings are. This is what the rings are. <laughs> so each one of these are going to have six images on it. So, uh, one on one, one image on one side, one image on the other side, one image on one side. So as you open this up, this will have six images here, six different images here, three more images here, something on this background, most likely a kind of a crowd thing. Maybe I'll just draw, paint something on there. And then here, of course, you'll have the six images here, three here and three here. So I'm just going to finish putting these together, but that is what the rings are going to do. So um, I kind of have to build this up before I can put the holes in there. Uh, but we will be putting rivets in every single one of those. So um, what I need five times four. I'm doing four so that we can set this inside of here like this. And hopefully these will fold okay. I didn't. I don't know if I left enough space on those again. So those are those will fold up like this, and that will come over the top of that. And these will fold up like this. I did not leave enough space in there. I hope I don't have to go back through and do it. I hope I can train those down a little bit. And that, and that. You see? Do you see? Then that will go like that, and that will go like that.
<laughs> Maybe we'll do it like that. Oh, can't do it like that. But that would be better for the folding purposes, isn't it? Well, not really. There. I want those to sit like that, and those to sit like that. Oh yeah, those will train down fine. We're okay. It's just we're going to make them more bulky, bulkier, when we, we're still going to put an image inside of these, and then we're going to put the outer frame on top of them. So we'll put the image in the frame or the back frame, however that works out. So this means that I need to address how I want to decorate this, this black. Because these, uh, it's so much. <laughs> so those are our four. Let's get this guy taped on here. And all I'm doing, I have the uh, three inch gaffers tape. So I just kind of cut it into thirds for my strips. And then you take about what, um, let me see, there's 12, mm, 24, mm, 13, 14, 15, 16, about 16 inches. Well, yeah, 16 inches makes sense because we know that these are eight inches tall, remember? What were those? Uh, seven and a quarter tall. This back piece is eight inches tall to fit into the book. Uh, we'll have to go back to the old videos to find out the exact measurements of everything. We went through those in extreme detail um, back then, so hopefully um, you guys can go back and figure that out. What, what sizes everything was. I mean, it will be really tough for me to make uh, full instructions on this because it's huge. It's monstrous. And we did do all of those cuttings step by step by step. And you have all the exact measurements on the videos. But I can try. I'll try. It's just a... It's an intimidating task, honestly. Okay, so I'm going to go through here real quick and just um, find my bone cutter or bone bone folder. Which a bone folder is just a fancy piece of plastic that really sticks things down. So you can use anything you want. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to really define these. Um, folds so that we can make that work more better. There we go. Just folding the tape. You guys probably have not seen my new um, mat board, uh, cutting board that I have here. We'll see how long I can keep it looking nice. That's going to be a difficult task. As you all know, I am pretty hard on things because I start to work and I really don't care if I get it messy. Um, and then just going back through here. So... In order to keep this step short, um, and you have a lot of video attached with this, with uh, the quick view of the place, and um, the little chat we had earlier, I think I need to go through and just take my black gesso and make everything the same color. Although... Um, you know, I know that I had decided to use something else to cover these. And I can't remember what it was. Whether it was the, um... Uh, 
I think I had decided to use the bags. Because before I can put the rivets in, I need to have the rivets are kind of be kind of the last step. Uh, truth be told. Um, so I don't want to paint these if it's not necessary to paint these. <clears throat> Four is a weird number for me. I always would prefer to do it in odd numbers, but um, with the fact that, what the heck? <laughs> um, we need two to sit in each one. That's why I'm doing it this, this way. As you remember, I had packed my chipboard, so I just used some cardboard from a Triscuit box or a Wheat Thins box. You can use uh, cereal boxes. You don't have to have actual chipboard. Chipboard's a little bit thicker and stiffer. I think it's good to have one side with the thicker and one side with the thinner. But with the thinner, I used actual just uh, cardstock. Just This is just craft cardstock. So, okay. I have backs cut out for um, all 12 of these frames. Remember, 4 times 3, so we have 12 frames here. So I have backs for all of them. I need to put two images in each back to back. I need to put an image here, and an image here, and a back there. Image here, image there. Uh, I don't know if I'll put an image on this back side, actually, because that's where my... Um, um, Aerial people are going to be. Um, image here. So we need a back here, a back here, a back here, and a back there. And we need at least four images there, if not more. And I can't find my paper. However, I think I do have... Oh, those are the new images. Okay, hold on here. These are some of the Patreon images. Oh, those ones would have been cool to use too. Okay. So. Those guys, she needs to be somewhere, doesn't she? She's super cool. Swoopy is missing. I don't know if I told you this. Swoopy is MIA. Missing in action. Yeah, that's... I don't know if you can see that. But that would be pretty cool up there. These guys down here, and one of these will have the acrobats in one. Actually, she'll go in this one since she's facing that direction. So, um, let's, let's choose our images. I think we're kind of to that spot. However, I think we will want to... Um, do our backgrounds before we put our images on. Um, can you see that? Not really, huh? So I can see where that picture is. I'm going to take off a quarter inch there. Picture. I am so upset about Swoopy not being here. Now, it has to fit in the frame, but it can't overlap over the frame. <laughs> Swoop star. Oh my swoopy. This unpacking thing is for the birds. Not a fan. I guess I could be doing it like this. Because these are the pieces, the backs, right? Yes. These are the backs. So this is this size. And then these should be here. All right? Wowza. Or we could put it over here on this side. Hmm. 
It's pretty dynamic shape in there, but I think I have skinnier ones that would work better. So this one, did I cut it off too much? Nope, just right. Okay, so we can take off this top piece just barely. We don't need to take it all the way off. Okay, so that's an option for that. I think that's a pretty cool option. Um, this regular tape, just to kind of tack it down a little bit here. Um, I'm just giving myself a visual of who's going to be where doing what. Now this, this set of images I think I posted somewhere. I think I posted them on Patreon. I think, I think. So you have to leave enough frame. Okay, so that's the backs. This is the backs. Okay, these are going to be our uh, 12 images that we're going to flip through. Should we do them on a large one? I don't know if I have enough space left. Oh, that's quite perfect right there. How about that? Love that. Okay, so we can cut off a little bit of the top of this. And absolutely the bottom, because remember, we can't even see his feet. So we know that that fits okay. All right. Now, I probably should have left a little bit more space on the sides, but I didn't. And that's unfortunate, but we will make it work. Now, we really can't put the images in, though until um God. we have these decorated i have to decorate all of these frames front and back so i've got quite a few of them done no i have quite a few of them painted black i don't have them i don't have them decorated now let's think of options we are now inside of the big top. One, two, three. Those are the extras. Okay. Oh, there she is. Okay. What are we going to do? What are we going to do here? We need to paint each one of those or decorate front and backs of all of these. This is a very extensive layout. This, there's not going to be anything easy about this. So we're not ready to choose images yet. But I have some excellent ones. I might have to go through and resize some of these. Um, That one should probably be one of these main ones, but it looks like I need it to be smaller. This is a great photo. Put those in one of them. Yeah, I try to put the animals in one, try to put the clowns in another, the tumblers, 
and I have more images, of course. Choosing the images should be fun, but it's probably going to be kind of hard. <laughs> okay, so um, I jumped ahead. Now I need to back up. Back up. All right, that's extra. Options. How am I going to tape the backs onto the fronts? Am I going to have to use that crappy double-sided tape again? Most likely. I could probably use some tacky glue, though. Mod Podge is not going to be strong enough. Especially we know Mod Podge does not like this tape. So... Another option would be what I did with these guys. Which was a uh, distressed oxide, a dis distressed oxide process. I think that would look pretty cool. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. All right. I just decided that. All right. I'm going to need to do one side of each of these. I need one. It's a different size. This is the smallest. One, two, three, four. So this guy has to come out. Rip that paper. Oh, you poop. One, two, three, four. At one point I was going to make five of each. I just can't. All right, this is an upper, an upper, and a side and a side. I had one more side. Is that other side a better point? Let's look here. Hmm. Okay. So. Yeah, we came up better. All right. Luckily, we already gessoed this guy. Um. And I think the the tape will add some kind of cool element to it. So I might go through and give it more texture, possibly. <laughs> Since I'm gonna do it that way. Okay, all of these need to be done on one side. And these all need to be done. On one side. Is it going to make a difference which side that I put this over the top? Let's see. I don't think that that's really going to make a difference. I would love to be consistent with it because that's how I am. So. Let's just sew the tops of all of these. Actually, I'm going to just sew the tops of these. It's not going to matter. Just do it consistently, I guess. Okay. Are you guys understanding the rivets or the, the rings a little better about what's going to happen with that? 
I mean, can you see the vision yet? It's quite the vision, isn't it? Um, all right. Put some paper down. We want to make sure that we get in the edges. We want to make sure that we get the, the outer outsides, the inner sides, all of it. All of it, all of it, all of it. Black gesso, where are you? Here we go. So Swoopy is most likely hanging out with my jar of black gesso also. I have the white gesso. I don't have the black gesso. No clue. No clue where they are. All right. So you guys know how to gesso. I really don't need you to be here for this part, do we? Um, oh, there's too much water in that brush. So you see that water coming out? That's what happens when you soak a brush, though. I wouldn't recommend it. It's not the best for the brush. I do it all the time, and, uh, you know, I probably shouldn't. Now, the only thing that I would prefer is if this was on the other side instead of this printed side. So we're going to give this printed side probably two coats, because that's going to be our front, essentially. So I'm just doing a quick coat on this guy. And sloppy. And I'm making texture as I'm doing it. I'm not really, I don't, I am not concerned about making a smooth surface. Um, I think that is casting a shadow for you guys. My lighting situation is still not perfect. I think one of my lights is still up in the box, up in the one of the outbuildings. Okay. And we don't want them to stick together either. And I don't want to paint my brand new green thing. We know that's going to happen though, right? Of course we do. I also thought about maybe even using like copper tape on this. I think that would be super cool. And I might still do that. Not sure how I'm going to decorate these. I just know I want to start out with a black surface. And if I do decide to use the, the, the Distress Oxides, it does give a really cool effect. Um, but I would like to, you know, kind of mimic the stripes too. So, but I don't, I, you know, I don't want to overwhelm it at the same time. So there's a lot of things to consider when deciding what we want to use for this. What tools, what, uh, yeah, you know what I mean. So I already lost one of my remotes in all of this mess. Thought it was up here. Should be at this table. It's not. Can't remember the last place I watched TV. Should be at my chair. It shouldn't be that far away. I can't find it. And I don't want to get gesso on my bland new sweater. I found a wool sweater at Ace Hardware. <laughs> to say that we are remote is an understatement. I need a winter coat. And uh, I looked at the thrift store and I looked at the Ace. I'm going to have to order one off of Amazon, but in order to um, get it delivered, I have to go through the Ace hardware, and they deliver packages to the Ace. Can you believe that? They deliver packages to the Ace hardware. They don't deliver it to your house. <laughs> it's very cool that they deliver it to the Ace hardware, but it is um, a rather interesting turn of events that... I won't be able to get stuff here. Or at the post office. I thought I could get it at the post office, but I can't get it at the post office. It has to go to the Ace Hardware. Like, what? What? Makes no sense. I don't need to do both sides of these. I'm just that way that I do both sides. Because, well, you know, what if I didn't plan right? And what if I decide to change my mind? And then I have to go back through and repaint it, and I could have just had it painted, and then it would have been just fine. And since I'm making a mess already, why not just continue to make a mess and get everything done right? 
That's why I'm doing the back sides. And as you can see, the back side is actually covering much better on this uh, without the printing on it. So it might be better to use this side anyway. And as we know, nothing likes to stick to that gaffer's tape. So maybe this will make the gaffer's tape stickier. And I'm just checking my edges to make sure I'm making a good frame for all of my images. Takes two seconds. Just, you know, take pride in your work. Yeah, you know, there's no reason to do crappy work. It really isn't. No reason whatsoever. So it doesn't take that long to do good work. And it's all about pride, people. Or you can be, you know, do it however you want to do it. That's I don't care. I don't care if you want to do, you know, sloppy work. What do I care? But yeah, we're not sixth graders anymore. We do know how to measure things. Oh God. I'm having. I can't make a straight line. See how that's getting the second coat on it and that's already well see it's pulling it up there though so let that just so dry and then you can come back over with a second coat but you're probably always going to see that uh, lettering through the gesso for some reason it doesn't really cover everything um So I'm sitting here thinking, okay, what other options could I use for these? What other options can I use to paint this or to decorate these? Hi guys, I was just looking out my window. I just put up a humming hummingbird feeder and the hummingbirds have already found it. It's only like 40 degrees out there, so I hope that it doesn't freeze overnight. We're supposed to get snow overnight, but it's so cool. I can watch the hummingbirds from my window. I will show you sometime. Okay, we'll chat soon. I'm still gessoing, so I'll bring you back in a little bit. All right. Hi guys, how's it going? It's late at night. Uh, see, it's about 7.30. I guess it's not that late but out there. It looks really, really, really dark. <laughs> like, really dark. It's going to take a little bit getting used to. But, um, I just wanted to bring you back because I think I'll go and edit this video for you guys. Everything is painted black. And um, I got all of the one sides done of these guys, which will be the back pieces for all of these, and then the top backs. So um, I think this is a good place to stop for now. And then tomorrow, when I wake up bright and early with all my with all my ideas going, um, I will try to figure out how I want to decorate. The inside of this tent and it's possible I think I'll probably keep a dark um, frame around everything uh, you know of course I have the the tape here and how do I work around that how do you probably the best thing would just to be leave it as black but that doesn't sound very interesting does it Let's see what I'm doing here this wool sweater is wonderfully warm, but then the heater goes on and I'm too hot, and then I take off the sweater and then I'm freezing cold. So, not used to the colder temperatures yet, and I'm absolutely having to adjust. So, um, this was not a very interesting video. We just showed you uh, putting together the flips, flip pages, and painting them. But, we have to do the little stuff in order to get to the big stuff. So, we'll chat soon. 
Okay, I promise tomorrow we'll have something more exciting. And you got to see the place today. How cool is that? All right. Mwah. Love you guys. Thanks for sticking around. And new subscribers, welcome. Please, if you haven't hit that subscribe button, please absolutely do do it. Please add this video to your playlist and to share and to spread the word. And we're making cool stuff on Patreon, so come and join me there. Uh, 10 bucks a month and you get full instructions on how to make some cool, cool, cool things. And I promise I will continue to work on giving you great content. All right, guys.